Trader, trade, trader, Cobb Crypto Podcast. Podcast. This is the Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trader Cobb Crypto Show. It's uh, an absolute honor to have with us today Jeff Coyen, uh, K-O-Y-E-N, if you're wondering. It sounds a bit like coin. We, we kind of like that. Uh, Jeff has a huge amount of experience, guys. Look, I mean, if I was to read his biography, I'd be here reading for half the day. Uh, he's written for some of the most amazing press uh providers out there and we're talking about New York Press with deputy editor of Forbes Traveller. I mean some of the things as well that has appeared in is the New York Times, The Guardian, New York Post, Wired, New York Magazine. I, I'm getting a bit of an affiliation here with New York perhaps but nowadays there's a lot more to do here with Jeff in the blockchain community and space and that is exactly why we have him. He's the president of 360 Blockchain USA which we're going to talk about as well and I just want to welcome to the show Jeff Coyne. Thanks for being here mate. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate the very kind words. Oh, mate, it's very easy to do when I've got a guest of this uh, caliber. So thanks so much for your time, mate. Uh, look, I've given you the most horrible uh, of biographies. If you want to give us a little bit of an intro about where you stand in terms of the blockchain community, the world, and what you're doing within that space, the microphone's yours. Sure. Thank you very much. I am, as you've said, a, a career journalist, um, but I'm also a, an early tech guy. Uh, I hate to date myself, but I was that kid in war games in his bedroom with an Atari 800 and a 300 baud modem in 1983, you know, war dialing into uh, my local, you know, computer systems. And so I caught the, caught the bug early, early internet, um, early on the web in 93, 94, and, uh, but didn't want to take sort of the, the tech path. So uh, I've been a journalist for basically my whole career, but I've always had the tech bug. So when crypto kind of came along and I caught this bug in, in 2013, 2014, I saw immediately what blockchain could become and, and what crypto and blockchain working together, working separately. You know, there's a big argument about whether they should be distinct entities or whether they're going to be intertwined. But uh, the fact is, uh, they, they are the, the new internet. And as a veteran of dot-com one in the mid-90s, I, I saw the potential of what this is. So I have kind of, um, you know, put my journalistic background to use uh, working for an investment firm. So we look for early stage investments in blockchain and crypto. And I, uh, you know, put my reporter's cap on, do my due diligence, kind of dig in and do my best to separate the bullshit from the, the real stuff and make smart investments. And, and you know what I love about um, your writing style, mate? I, I, well, first of all, guys, all the listeners, check it out. Like on Google, Jeff, J-E-F-F-K-O-Y-E-N, because the, the style that Jeff writes, I love, because it's very similar to the style that this show runs it. It's it's conversational. It's not trying to be the smartest man in the room. Sorry if that's what you're trying to do, Jeff. But it's, it's, it's more <laughs> about just giving an experience based on, on experience of your own. And we do see in the space out there overnight experts. We do see people out there that are sort of, um, you know, turkeys and hurricanes is one of the sayings I like to have, which is even a turkey can fly in a hurricane. Instant experts overnight underqualified they've made a few bucks so therefore they're a god now i don't see that from you you're a veteran mate um not you know you say you don't want to age yourself well too bad because all you got to do is type your name into youtube mate and we can see we can see that, you, <laughs> that you've been around that you're someone we can listen to and respect i mean look I, i'm happy here i'm the young one in this conversation usually i'm not I mean, I'm, I'm 34 uh, and and for this industry i mean i, I feel well placed simply because i mean i didn't go through the dot-com boom but I've been trading uh, 11 years now, actually, you know, properly professionally trading. I'm a technical trader, but I've been investing since I was 16. So I have studied the dot-com a great deal. And I'm with you on that, mate. I think that we are um, at the most exciting. Look, put it this way. I've dropped everything else to focus all of my business uh, attention, all of my trading attention, and all of my capital, literally everything I'm doing now, Jeff, is in this space. Now, that takes a bit of balls because I'm not just a 34-year-old who's taking care of himself. I've got two kids and a partner. So, you know, I have responsibility. Uh, I'm kind of all in, um, and it's, it's good to know that, I mean, I mean, my, my decisions aren't determined by others, but, um, you know, the more intelligent people that I get in the show, the, the, the more, uh, the stronger I feel about the decision to be here. Now, we're talking about block blockchain 360 do you want to give us a bit of a and then the listeners a bit of an understanding for what it's all about mate yeah, 360 blockchain. Uh, we are a public company traded in Canada on the uh, on the CSE under the 
ticker code. We invest in blockchain uh, early uh, early opportunities in blockchain. We were one of the first public companies to dedicate to blockchain. So you know, we might have heard, uh, especially in the the latter, latter half or latter quarter of last year, all these companies suddenly jumping on the blockchain bandwagon. We were ahead of that. We dedicated ourselves to blockchain. Um, and I came on board as an advisor and then joined as president of the USA subsidiary, which basically allows us to invest in US-based uh, companies a little more easily. And we have a we have a few things. We've got investment called uh, Pressland. We've got something called Arcology. We've diversified a little bit to media, to blockchain platforms themselves. But uh, the point being that we are looking for uh, we we don't invest in ICOs. We're looking for sort of traditional metrics. We want to find companies with good teams, with good tech, with roadmaps. You know, everybody's you know gone batshit. In the in the ICO world or, or whatever you want to call it now, STOs or TGs, and we're we're that's not what we're jumping on. We want fundamentally good companies. Uh, you know, it, much as dot com one, you know, every, everyone's predicting a big bubble and a big burst, and we're gonna see some of that. But there were plenty of companies that weathered the the, the storm of dot com one, and it was the companies that focused on fundamentals, and that's that's sort of our guiding philosophy: find good companies with you know fundamental fundamentally good outlooks and have their books together and we invest in them. So, okay, perfect question because we do cover this quite a lot. I speak to a lot of fund managers. I speak to a lot of different guests. And I mean, my, my position in the space is of an investor. Uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm very, very happy that there is technology and projects and whatnot that can help make things better for the people and change the world to a certain extent. But I'm also an investor first and foremost. So, when you talk about fundamentals, I am very, very interested. I had a good chat last week with a big fund manager out of New York um, who is in this space, and he invests, his funds invest in uh, disruptive technology, i.e. blockchain. That's, that's the most dis disruptive that we're seeing in the space at the moment. Now, one of the conversations that we had and that I have with a lot of people is traditional investors, are for, for the most part, are not yet in this market. And this is where the growth can come from. Now, traditional investors are people that look at price earnings growth, they're looking at internals of the company, the debt ratios, their projects that are coming up, what they've got, where they're developing, yada, yada, yada. This is what the traditional Warren Buffett-esque type value proposition comes from, is an understanding of the core business and the future of the business. Now, in, in cryptocurrency, um, not just cryptocurrency, because we've got to talk about crypto assets. Uh, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a whole asset class. I think it's undercooked. People talk about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a small, incy wincy part of this entire space. So within crypto assets, a lot of the time we're finding it very difficult to come up with metrics that actually provide us with what I would consider to be traditional fundamental um, you know, rules that we can stick to. What are you looking for? When you talk about already established projects, not, not, not going into ICOs, and we'll cover that in a minute, but what sort of things are you looking at that you will allow you to decide whether or not, if you can decide, whether we're overbought, fair value, or undervalued? I, I, I totally agree. Those um, All those traditional ben benchmarks are, are not here yet. And they may never be in crypto because you know, you're, not, you're not paying dividends out on stock. You're not um, taking equity investments. Although, you know, you don't, you don't get a board seat for putting, you know, a uh, uh, million dollar on a preval four million. You know, you don't get that in, in this world. You you just don't. It's um it, it it's new rules. But if you look at fundamentals, I'm talking about teams. You know, uh, two years ago, three years ago, in the ICO market when it was still very small and very young, and still people think it's chaotic now. It was it, it was nuts a couple of years ago, and you could throw up a coin, because let's say tokens didn't really exist yet, you'd throw up a coin and it could be anonymous guys who, who took pride in their anonymity. They put up you know, uh, handles on Twitter. They didn't have a LinkedIn profile and they could launch a coin. And that was a, a proper ICO, initial coin offering. Today, it's different. You've got tokens. Um, nobody wants to see an anonymous team sort of, you know, Trying to be, you know, the next Verge or Dogecoin or whatever. You want to see tokens and teams and technology and use case and preferably a track record of getting product out the door. You know, uh, I personally, I've invested in a lot of ICOs and just took a flyer on it. Throw 
you know, whatever it is, throw at the time a few ether and, you know, uh, threw a, a whole coin at it a couple of years ago when there wasn't much at stake there when Bitcoin was a thousand bucks. And it was, it was fun. But if you're talking about funds and you're talking about companies investing and you're talking about dropping a million dollars, you're not going to get, you know, you may not get a five year PL, but you can look at the team. You can make sure they have a track record. You can make sure they're real people. You can make sure they're, um, you know, complying with their jurisdictional regulations, you know, and, and so forth. Um, it, it may take a long time for the Warren Buffets of the world to come in, but that's great. You know, we will exit to them. You know, yes. you're an investor. We'll buy now, and I will gladly exit to Warren yep. at a 10x or 100x in three years, mm-hmm. if not sooner. So if he can't, you know, he being you know a, a symbol of of all those guys, if they can't get on board with what this new mind frame is and what this technology can do, and the fact that no, you're not going to get a, a five year PNL, then stay out of it. Right. That's fine because I'm willing to jump in. Um, I'm, I don't have $10 million to invest personally or professionally, but we have money to put into seed rounds for companies that have promise and we'll gladly sell out you know, our, our shares to those guys in a couple of years. Yeah, look, I hear you, mate. Um, and you know what's really, really refreshing? It's, you know, the old trick, the old, the old saying, old dog, new tricks. I hate to use it with you, mate, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's really, really good to hear somebody who's been around a while actually seeing this and taking the time to be interested, learning about it. Not only have you seen this, you've been ahead of the game, Jeff. Like, It's it's really refreshing. Like, I've had a conversation with, with my dad. My dad's done well. He's, he's got some he's got some beans of his own. And I said, look, Dad, you know, back at 3,000, this, this is the thing. You know, you, I've got to tell you now because I know what this is going to do. And when I've made an absolute killing out of this, I don't want you to go, why didn't you tell me about it? I'm giving you your warning now. I will manage a portfolio for you nominate the number and I'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. And, and he was like, no, I'll be clear about that. I'm like, right, I've done my bit. You're not saying that. You're there with an open mind. You're, to, call, to come from the, the example you just used, with the uh, the traditional investors and Warren Buffett, those types of people, you're kind of, you are that person, but you're not, is what I'm getting at. For those people to come in, like you've got the experience is what I mean. You've got the experience. You've been around long enough, but, you're open-minded enough to see it. And I think that that's what's lacking a lot at the moment. That's why I use the term crypto assets, not just cryptocurrency, because I believe that cryptocurrency still has that stigma around it of, of fraud, Silk Road, Bitcoin only. And, and people, a lot of the time, and, and rightly so to a certain extent, because when I'm looking at a trade or an investment, I'm looking for more so reasons not to invest. And if I can go through my list of, of reasons, you know, if I can check things off and there's nothing, there's no reason not to take the trade or to invest, well, then I'm left with a very easy decision. I will invest. But in the same respect, I'm making informed decisions based around a rational uh, you know, checklist. A lot of people are just sticking their heads in the sand. And what they do is they go, oh, Bitcoin's fallen. Ha, 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 you idiots. And then when Bitcoin and the, the greater community of cryptocurrency, crypto assets soars, they go quiet. It's really refreshing to see that there's somebody there, such as yourself, who has, uh, who, who, you can sit at the dinner table and discuss this with these people. Because a lot of the people in this space tend to be younger and they just, they just get discounted as idiots. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think yeah. you have, uh, you, you want youthful <laughs> exuberance, you know. Um, I don't live in San Francisco for a good reason. I don't like San Francisco. I am a veteran of the startup world, like proper VCs. I was talking to somebody about this today. Three years ago, um, I, I caught the bug 2013, 2014, for, bought my first Bitcoin, just very modest, you know, uh, you know a, a few bucks out of the paycheck. And that turned out to be, you know, a, a good thing. 230 bucks turned into something else. Um, but I, I loved back in 2013, 2014, that there was no traditional like Silicon Valley presence. There were really, it was just the, the original sort of cypherpunks, the, the people that were in it for a couple of years, the, the platforms were there. It was like mid level maturity. You had Bitrex, you know, you had all the, the familiar names, but sort of the VC guys hadn't come into the party yet. And it was, it was so great to see because it felt like, we were discovering something new and it was people like me who, you know, I'm in my forties. I got my two kids also and, you know, and the wife and the dog. Um, but also we were trading alongside 
24 year olds who came up through this natively who maybe have been trading longer yeah. than me. You know, there are 24 year olds out there that got into this when they're 16 years old. And I love that. Now, you know, as of two years ago, VC came in, now Wall Street comes in, but that's fine. Let them catch up, and if they don't understand it, I'm absolutely fine with that. Let them buy when Bitcoin is 19 because I'll sell my Bitcoin to them. And then if it crashes because they don't have nerves, I'll rebuy it seven grand. I'm absolutely fine with this because I understand where we're going. I, you know, there are a lot of people that say buy and hold forever. That's fine. If you want to buy and hold forever, I, I like to swing trade. I like to get in and you know win and lose it, but ultimately, I'm in for the long haul. I, I'll make some money along the way, but I do believe in this technology, and I think they're all going to play catch up, and it's going to get more and more expensive as they catch up to us. No, I think that's I think that's pretty spot on, mate. Um, you know, the, they are starting to come in. When I, when people are having the conversations with me about sort of saying, oh, you know, what about this? What about that? As far as you know, um, the involvement uh, of the institutions, or, and they're saying, look, oh, this person's saying it's a fraud. This person's saying it's bad. What do you think about that? I was like, well, what do I think about that? It's it's obvious. It's it's. I know these people. <laughs> I know how these people think. Now, I've been a trader for a long time. I had a, I had a little fund in London. I spent six years in London over there, and I, I avoided uh, being on prop desks because I did not like the people on prop desks. I, I figured that you know the whole point of me getting into trading was so I could make as much money as I wanted as a one man band. I didn't have to have seven hundred employees to make a hundred million dollars. Uh, that was what I enjoyed about trading, and it meant that I could you know. Choose who I was friends with, as opposed to being jammed into a into a sweat box with a bunch of guys that walk around talking about how big their dicks are um, and how much drugs they can do. I, I really had no interest in that at all. And sure, if you're on a prop desk out there and that's not you, that's fine. The ones I saw in London, I was invited to, they were they were hideous environments. Now, yeah. what I love about it is I, I looked at that and said, look, I know these people, I know how they think that. They're saying it's a fraud because they're threatened or they're pushing the price down. Secondly, what will happen is this: the more the tide shifts. These investment banks, these investment bankers, they care about one thing, money. That is it. There is nothing more they care about. That is what they are driven by. If they can see or when they work out how to make money from it, they will be in. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And sure enough, we've seen just recently, actually, we, we had seen some acquisitions um, of, of certain companies from companies that were sort of owned by the, the big name investment banks, but they were sort of hidden because they bought the smaller company that would go and make the purchase. Recently, Goldman Sachs has come out and yep. appointed they're, a... Yep, they're um, coming in. That's right. Now, Goldman Sachs saying, giving the, look, we are putting on a crypto expert specialist, whatever they, whatever they, you know, their, their big corporate bullshit name is, for this individual, they have stood up and they have pretty much rung the bell and said, we're the first ones to the pie. Now, what that does, the, the, the vampire squid, as it was coined in the uh, global financial crisis, is now the most active predator in this space, which is good because everybody else is going, well, Goldman Sachs are there. It must be good. Because it, it, as stupid as that sounds, I know it's but, uh, why does it have to be good because Goldman Sachs is there? Because the bottom line is Goldman Sachs is good at making money. They're bringing more credibility and the tide is on its way. Absolutely. The the, the vampire squid, actually, that term was coined by uh, my friend Matt Taibbi. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've worked with him over the years or, or years ago. We worked together. Uh, absolutely. It's the green light. And, mm. it, you know, again, it's getting it's going to be more expensive for them to come in. They... You know, uh, a certain amount of people came in in December and it got exuberant. Um, and nineteen, you know, Bitcoin at nineteen five, uh, I think we'd all agree was yeah. was definitely overvalued at the time. It was fun. Yeah. You know, I I cashed out a few. I I took care of my kids' college funds. It was, it was a great time in December, mm -hmm. and then January hurt. Um, but. You know, we didn't. I, I didn't. I'm not on the desk. I didn't have to worry about it crashing. I could weather it out. And most crypto people are. You know. It, Still, Bitcoin at six grand is a miracle. You know, anyone who thinks that Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin at six is is a, a sign of failure is a, is an idiot. They haven't yeah. been around long enough. Bitcoin above a thousand bucks was a miracle a year and a half ago. So uh, these guys coming in is is great news. It validates. I I hope that everybody listening to this has their positions, and also it's time. You know, anyone listening to this, 
I, I hope you know. I hope you've discussed it in the past. I hope you discuss it in the future. That the real action is in the non-Bitcoin. It's in the altcoins. So if you're afraid that uh, Bitcoin itself, Bitcoin proper, BTC, is sort of you know climbing up, and you're afraid to enter, fine. Jump over to the altcoins. Look for your opportunities in you know the top ten, the top fifty, the top thousand. Dig in there, and you know you're a TA guy. You know I, I wouldn't say the technical analysis holds true and works for this because this market is just insane. Yeah. But there are great opportunities, and there are day trades, there's swing trades, there's long plays. There is so much fun out there to be had. And again, if you're not on a desk, it's it's fun. If you could afford to do it, and you've got a little fu money, or you're playing with with house money because you're already cashed out. I love it. it. It's a fun thing to do. And the fact that you could actually make significant money, you know, what's not even more fun about that? Yeah, I hear you, mate. I mean, I guess the, the major lesson out there or the major point to take from that is, you know, I practice my preach quite heavily and that's to have your own rules. I mean, if you don't have, well, what I say to people is you've got to have a strategy, right? If you if you can't write down, if I said to you uh, at lunch, you know, what's your strategy, write it down and, and you can't come up with it, then you, you, you probably don't really have something that is really easy to quantify scale and uh, and replicate now you might want to work on that so that you can it's important that you enter into the market with a view now what we see and what we hear a lot of i hadn't been really too familiar with this acronym until coming into crypto is fomo the fear of missing out and we see people get consumed by that now bitcoin is bitcoin that is all it is bitcoin is flavor of the crypto market it's the largest of the market cap and i use it as kind of an index um I know it's not an index, but you'll have noticed, Jeff, and anybody who's listening who spends any time looking at charts or even their block folio, when Bitcoin's up, markets tend to follow. When Bitcoin's down, markets tend to overreact. Um, and with that being in mind, I mean, I, I, use, I use Bitcoin, but I also use the top 10 as a sentiment. Um, because we do lack an index in itself, I use the top 10 as a sentiment guide to see where we're at. Now, whether you use TA, TA works absolutely fine in the top 100 because it's an emotion. Like technical analysis, trends, markets move because human emotion plays a part. It's the only reason why it actually works. Now, we have a lot of emotion in this market and we have a lot of volatility in this market. You've got to stay above the top 100 if you want to be able to use TA. But in the, below that, you can pick up some truly great projects that have got such a small market cap and low value that have a huge amount of potential because there's actually a real world use case going on. And I think that's something that a lot of people miss out on is the real world use case. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, uh, for all the talk of and, and the reality of pump and dumps, you know, this is as Wild West as it gets. This is stock market before regulation. This is, you know, it is absolutely crazy out there. And market manipulators, market makers can do, you know, can wreak havoc on Telegram channels. But, you know, uh, again, if you're, if you're, if you're playing in the market, with a, with a sober mind frame, you set your stop loss. You're not jumping in to get greedy. If you have a long term vision for yourself, if not, even if you're playing on day trades and, and short term trades, as long as you have a long term perspective, you you could do fine, and you could avoid some of these things, and, and you could even capitalize on them. I I agree with what you're saying about anyone coming in. I you know everybody. For two years, I was the boring guy who wanted to talk about Bitcoin. And then suddenly, you know, last year I was the most popular guy at the cocktail party. And I would say to, you know, I, I've given the 101 to, to a bunch of friends. Some people jumped in, some people didn't, because it, it's very complicated to, to jump into, especially if you're coming in, you know, uh, cold. Um, but I, I always say to everybody is, I want you to put in, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, $100, 500 1000 a 1000 And I just want you to buy Bitcoin or Ether one or the other, and just let it sit for a week and watch. Watch what happens. How did it make you feel? You know, Did you double your money? Did you lose your money? Just what kind of emotions went through your head for those days? And then you're going to decide if you're going to put in more. Because if you couldn't take it, you 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 got to get out because this will wreck you. You will, you know, experience insane trades, you know, uh, wins and losses overnight because it, the, one the, one of the things that's so glorious about this it's twenty four hours a day and it's global. There is no closing bell. There is no opening bell. There is no aftermarket trading. Uh, that's why everybody I know rolls over in the middle of the night and checks Blockfolio because you're just kind of curious. What did Japan do right now? You know, whether or not you're jumping up to make a trade isn't 
really the point, but you just kind of are always aware of it. Um, and if you don't have the heart for that, then maybe crypto isn't quite yet for you. Wait till you know. Wait, wait till the ETFs come out. Wait, wait till Goldman offers you you know a, a stable product to invest in crypto assets. But if you want to trade, make sure you got the stomach for it. Yeah, I agree. Look, it's sort of similar to what I said. I mean, when, when I'm looking at trading, trading and investing are two very, very different things. A bad trade should never become an investment and vice versa. Um, but, but, you know, we, we looked at putting aside a certain amount of funds I mean, for trading specifically. And for each trade, you should risk X. Now, whatever that X is, some people risk 1%, some people risk more. But um, I tend to say to people, no matter what, especially if they're coming back to a point at which they might have not – two things happen. People either overtrade. Uh, and they take too many trades and therefore they blow out or they have a bad run or, or it affects them emotionally. This is one of the things that happens usually most commonly. The other most common thing I see is that people either get they get analysis paralysis. They, they cannot take anything because they're too worried. In both cases, the best thing I say to people is, if you're going to go out to lunch today, how much would you spend on your lunch? And they go, what, what are you what are you?" What are you talking about? <laughs> and it's it, the lunch thing is that's how much you should be risking on your trade. If you're going to go out, for, if, if you're a high roller, if you've got plenty of money, you're probably going to go to a different sort of restaurant and that lunch might set you back $200. Okay, let's, let's say it could cost you 200 bucks to go to lunch with your friend. That means risk $200 per trade. If you're somebody who can go out and have lunch for 25 bucks, then that's how much money you're going to spend. The point is it's a tangible amount of money to use. It's not such a small amount that you do not care and therefore you'll trade rec recklessly and not follow your rules, but it's also enough money that it's, it's like, oh, okay, I, I don't really want to lose that. So it, it holds you in the game, but it allows you to open up to actually experience what's going on because if you're not doing you can't learn. Fail or like success or failure, it doesn't come from an individual trade. It comes from a, a group of trades and, and monitoring how you go throughout that group. Now, if you can't group those trades, you can't learn. So again, you know, I, I'm with you on that. Manage your risk and be aware of how you're going to enter this space because if you're not, it's very easy to be very optimistic now and very, very sad down the track when you're going to throw all your savings into a shitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the shit coins will wreck you. I'm a I'm a veteran of the the verge wars. Uh, from from early on, I, I wrote about it uh, last year, and I, I was in verge. It's one of the most contentious of the shit coins, and I don't yeah. even know if you can call it a shit coin anymore because it's trading at you know like eight seventy five right now. Mm. You know, I'm one of those guys that was in it four, six, and, and eight satoshis, and I, I rode that up and down, and it was it was a fun ride. And I jumped out. I don't know why I jumped out at, at four or five hundred sats. Completely thrilled. You know, who wouldn't take a? That was a hundred x based no, on yeah. Bitcoin, and then it was another, <laughs> say, six x based on Bitcoin's growth itself. Um, and that's also something I, I try to talk to people about. And it's not a one-on-one conversation because it it ends up kind of confusing people. But you know, crypto trades like stocks combined with forex. You know, you, you've got sort of a, a third dimension that I've had so many friends and I've had journalists call me for comment on any random day where they're saying, "Wow, you know, Ripple's on a run," and I'll look, but I'll view it on the BTC, you know, value. They're yeah. looking at a dollar value. And meanwhile, Bitcoin went up that day where Ripple technically stayed flat. So you, you try to explain that to people. It's like, well, don't, you know, if Bitcoin's up 10%, that doesn't mean your shit coins are up 10%. They're just up in Bitcoin dollar value. So it, it's this like, I don't know, it, it's something I really try to instill on people is you got to kind of dig in and really kind of understand what crypto is all about is it ultimately trades out against bitcoin and then if you if you actually want to see returns and gains and losses then you're trading out to your local currency yeah, I, I'm with you on that as well. And I find that at, um, you know, for, for me with my clients, I'll, I'll do a daily top 100 scan, right? So that's that's the market that I sort of work on. Now, I'll, I'll scan either against the dollar, but mostly against Bitcoin, especially if Bitcoin is um, relatively stable like it is at the moment. Yeah. I mean, stability yeah. in that coin gives fantastic trends on the alts. I'm having an absolute ball right now. Totally. Um, it's just been amazing. But in the same respect, I mean, as, as the space develops for a trader, as myself, um, we don't have access to some of the products. Like, for example, if, if I see a good short, I mean, you, know, you know what happens, right? Bitcoin takes off uh, and everything against Bitcoin is going down. 
people go, oh, it's a shit project. It's not doing any good. It's like, well, no, it's, it's, if you look at it against a dollar, you'll actually get a true value of the project itself. Yes, it's going down against Bitcoin, but it's still increasing in value. And people can't seem to grasp that, which is right. or, or vice versa. Or yes, vice versa. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, the, the thing is, we've got dollar tether we can trade with. We, we've got Ethereum we can trade against, although the volume's not quite as good. We've got Bitcoin as our number one big dog at the moment. Now, I want to see the space develop where I can still get good volume against dollar because when Bitcoin, or, or at least short against Bitcoin, because right now, we like I'll, if I see a fantastic trend uh, where Bitcoin takes off, like back end of last year, I'm like, look at that trend. It's just absolutely perfect, but I can't short the bloody thing. It's it's dead to me, so I can only look to trade. Um, it, it, gets, it gets a bit more tricky, whereas right now, with with alts moving so well against Bitcoin, some very, very strong trends in there. I mean, we're looking at it at the moment, and, and it's an absolute playground. I mean, one of the examples is, I mean, I, I took an EOS trade with my members back at well, eight, eight, four sats. So it was, you know, we're sitting at 20 now, right? So we, uh, the trade risk on those, it's at about a times 20, 25 on the, on the risk multiple. So if, you know, your risk multiple is 1,000, that's a 24,000 return type thing. And and it just continues to trend so beautifully. Well, now EOS is just an example because I actually got a trade on that. There's so many out there. But here's a big but is uh, ultimately uh, if Bitcoin goes on a run, these trends disappear. Now, I know you talk about trends as well. I'm interested to see what, like we, we probably talk different types of trends, right? What, what sort of trend are you looking for? Are you looking for more uh, social media trends, market trends, technical analysis? Or what, when you talk about trends, what trends are, are you sort of focusing on? Yeah, for me, um, and it is because I come from a different background. I'm, I'm not a, a finance guy. I'm self-taught. I, I know my way around a PL and on a spreadsheet, and I'm you know, pretty good with math. But I don't have that deep TA background. I'm, I'm always playing catch up on that, and I'm always, you know, standing, you know, wide-eyed at, at these, you know, these savants who can put up charts and and, and you know and just nail this stuff. It, it's pretty amazing. Um, I. Am very much a uh, more of a, a cultural trend person, and it's trickier because you know crypto doesn't move rationally. It doesn't put out quarterly earning reports. It doesn't doesn't move on the hire of a new key player. It just doesn't move the market like that. And we don't we don't know what moves the markets. It, it's social media, it's Telegram, it's pumps, it's it's so many different variables. And and like you said, yeah, it's it's Bitcoin goes on a run or Bitcoin collapses drags everybody or pushes everyone, you know, uh, counter. Um, that's just sort of, you just accept that as, as what it is. And that's, that's the inherent chaos. I personally, and also uh, at 360 blockchain, I like to look at more of the cultural analysis. I want to see, so we're talking about use case. I want to see people that are actually, you know, meaning to do something. Um, there is so much uh, bullshit and the ICO space is obviously so full of, of bullshit. And I get invited to advise on ICOs and, you know, my LinkedIn requests are, you know, insane every day, like anybody else uh, with any sort of profile in this space. But I, I won't advise on an IC, I haven't, I haven't, I've, I'm jumping onto two of them right now, but I want to know that they are doing something that makes sense. Um, I, I don't want to say for the greater good because I'm not an idealist in that way, but I do think that crypto comes from. It has idealism in its DNA, and I like that about crypto in the same way that the internet in 92, 93, um, even going back further to the 80s, was a very idealist, optimistic space. We have that feeling in crypto. It is in the DNA of crypto. So I want to see projects that are trying to push that forward. I want to see... I, I don't think Steemit is the new Facebook, mm -hmm. but I like that it's out there. Um, and I don't think we're going to see a new... Facebook and crypto, but that's not necessarily the point. We don't have to go a one for one disruption. We don't have to have new Facebook. What we can come up with are new paradigms for communication. We don't have to say we're going to topple the big guy to become that big guy. What we could say is we're going to take out the bricks underneath him and we're going to create a whole new thing that they didn't see coming. So I like to see that kind of stuff. I don't need to see Uber on the blockchain, but I do like to see decentralized marketplaces. You know, the, those are the kind of things I'm looking out for. 
Yeah, look, I mean, yeah. the, the, going back to what you said earlier about the uh, the ICO, I mean, you, you guys don't look at uh, investing in ICOs. Do you, I mean, you'll advise on an ICO, and I, I understand that side of it. With that comes responsibilities. It also comes benefits. Um, why is it that you sort of don't look so much at ICOs at the moment? I just think, um, well, one, we're a public company, and I think the regulatory issues are so messy right now that I would rather just step back and and wait for different regulatory bodies to catch up, which, which to be honest, I welcome. I want to see you know, certain frameworks put in place. And I think in, in the US at least, the SEC has signaled that they're not going to try to choke things and they want to find a, a, you know, a, a logical path forward that's going to um, encourage innovation without stifling and, and they just want to protect investors. I'm fine with that um, because, again, institutionally and as a company, I don't want to put you know, we're, we're not, you know, we don't have a half billion dollar market cap. We're a fairly small company and we place our investments wisely. And I don't want to put the, you know, take the trust of our shareholders and put it into something that turns into an exit scam or, or turns into vaporware. There's just too much of that out there. Um, we prefer to invest in teams that will ICO, but we still want to try to get an equity play because then we've got skin in the game. We could provide expertise. We essentially become de facto advisors to ICOs without becoming, you know, a, a shill. So that that's sort of our perspective on it. Now this may change. ICO markets are going to, you know, STO market. They're going to be called STOs in no time. The the STOs, security token offerings, are going to stabilize and find their path, and we'll probably jump in at that point. Um, I just think it's a little messy. I personally would drop five grand, but I would not put you know five hundred grand of my company's money into one of these things. Yeah, that, that, that's fair enough. I mean, if you came into it sort of as an advisor, maybe it's a different perspective. But I mean, what you said about you know the SEC not looking to choke ICOs. Talk me more about that because I, I know that um, you know it's very difficult for someone in the US to invest in an ICO at the moment. Is, is that still the case? A lot of them are excluded because of the potential uh, legalities going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, technically, it's still true. You will still find a lot of ICOs that throw up, even if they're doing KYC, their local version. They they won't accept U.S. residents. And you know, between you and me and and the microphone, two years ago, I I per well, I guess it's okay because I wasn't in, I wasn't working at my current company. Two years ago, I fired up the VPN and went around it. And you know, I I invested, you know, not invested. I participated in ICOs and put, you know, my personal money into a few of them and you know, of course got some some returns on it, but I had to pretend I wasn't in the US. And that was actually again sort of the fun of this. It was yeah. something we we're going to get into a little bit before is the the level playing field is that I understand that investors need to be protected, but I also don't agree with that fully. Do we want mom and pops and grandmas, you know, throwing their money into ICOs? Of course not. But should 25 year olds and 35 or 45, however old we all are, be allowed to put five grand into this eyes wide open? Absolutely. Let me put five grand in or whatever, eyes wide open to the risks. I understand it. I want to put it in. So that's what I've done. You could bypass certain things and you could fire up the VPN and pretend you're from somewhere else. Now, you know, today this it's different in 2018 that most of the legit ICOs are either requiring, you know, accredited investors and KYC documentation from US investors or they're just excluding them entirely and I don't blame them. Nobody wants a knock on their door from their local regulatory agency a year from now saying you know, you should have known better a year ago. So it's easier just to play it safe. And that's also where we're at as a company at 360 Blockchain. We are Canadian. We're, um, you know, I'm not, my bosses are. We're a public company. That's where we have to have an overabundance of caution, especially as we move forward with a couple of STOs that we're going to launch in our portfolios. Yeah, look, I understand that entirely. And look, I think um, one of the big things that I'm excited about, which, you know, you know might not be. Uh, as I don't know, excitable for others in the space is, is regulation. And, you know, I, I see people tripping over themselves and contradicting themselves, saying this market's going to go to five trillion dollar market by the end of X. And you go, okay, but we don't want anyone else involved, right? Well, you better right, put right. everything you've got into it because otherwise you're not going to get there. You know, they, well, a lot of the time, and this comes back to the, um, I call it a very um, 
it, it's a new market. It's, a, it's an irrational market. It's an emotional market. And it's a highly undereducated market in just sometimes just the way shit works. Uh, you know what I mean? Like to, to get a large market cap, well, what is a market cap? It's a lot of money. It's a market capitalization. How do you get more capitalization? More money coming in. Where does that money come from? Well, I don't know. Don't want it to come from institutions. Of course, it's got to come from those places. We've got to create an environment where we can actually onboard this massive money for us to do well. So it's it's a funny round round we go. I'm I'm a trader. I'm an investor. I'm a capitalist minded person, but I'm also um, pretty responsible. I, I prefer to have responsible investments. Um, I'm not. You know, I won't make a buck at any cost. I mean, I've had people on the show trying to do all trying to get me will try to get in this show for all sorts of reasons and throwing all sorts of things but unless sure you know every now and again i might take you know i haven't had, had it at this stage but if we take uh, an advert or something fine because we're going to cover our costs but at the end of the day i'm not just out for a dollar i want this space to be created right i want it to be nurtured properly and I, the biggest thing about regulation is that not just from a I'm going to do extraordinarily well once all the money starts flying in point of view, but people that are getting ripped off. Um, I, I There's one thing I hate more than anything else in this world, and that's people that are deceptive for their own personal gain. It really gets my goat. Like, you know, you want to fire me up? Let's talk about people ripping people off, right? I, I hate it. And with a bit of regulation, I think we can avoid taking mean, So we can start to take some of these absolute wankers out of this market that are there just purely for personal gain at anyone else's costs. That's why I'm excited for regulation. I hate seeing people that don't have the sort of skills that we do, Jeff, that don't have that wide open understanding of not just investments, but the tech, the space. I, I, I see them getting taken for a ride and it really upsets me because it hurts the market too. The old saying, once bitten, twice shy, if they come in, they get bitten. They might not come back for five years. You know, the opportunity is now for a lot of these people that have smaller amounts of money. So I just, the regulation excites me from so many different angles. I'm not in any rush for it to happen. I'd rather it take longer and we do it properly than just go and blanket everything and stuff it up. But I think that for me, that is a really exciting prospect coming up. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel the exact same way. I Again, I'm in no hurry. I, uh, you know, if what, what's amazing about crypto is, again, it, it's global. Um, as much as we see markets move based on some news, where, what tends to happen, and I'm sure this happens to you, you could wake up on a random weekday morning, nine o'clock your local time, and look at the charts and say, you know, what happened overnight? And you end up sort of retrofitting your explanations. You could say, oh, okay, India, you know, clamped down or, or South Korea raided an exchange or Japan did this, you know, and, and these are true that markets will move based on, on these, um, you know, very different markets around the world, but it, it's not going to collapse. So as much as, you know, the US coming in and regulating isn't going to destroy it, no. you know, they're not going to come in overnight with the big foot. And even they, if they did, Again, it would not destroy it. It could put a, a pause on it, but it, it's a global thing. It's twenty four seven. There's a lot more people. At, uh, you know, there's a lot more upside for people out there in the rest of the world. You know, if, if I make five hundred bucks or a thousand bucks on a, on, a, on a day trade, or you know, I look at my portfolio and I'm up a thousand bucks, that's great. I'm probably going to let it ride, but that thousand bucks is a thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars somewhere else that mean that goes a lot more it goes a lot further to somewhere in, in a different economy and it's the same thousand dollars so uh that's why crypto is amazing because it is going to persevere that all that being said i am a veteran of a startup i had a startup i raised money i lost money but the people who lost money on my startup including myself again were eyes wide open nobody was filing a suit or crying or going to the press or saying it was criminal it was an investment it went in everybody there was a cap table there were papers there were tax forms we would have made money and we would have been happy and we didn't we lost money we just moved on that's where we're going to get with crypto is open it up, eyes wide open open it up set some terms put some framework let's file some 1099 forms in the us where it's tax losses tax gains and let everybody in and give people a framework there's always going to be a wild west yeah. if you want to trade shit coins you're always going to find a place to trade shit coins on the litecoin markets go do that 
Um, but let's let real investors come in and understand what's going on. Mate, you hit the nail on the head. It comes down to education, as I always say. You know, I, I've, the, fed, the fund that I set up years ago in London, uh, a wealthy family uh, said that you know the the money that they can spend on the kids' education is the best money they can spend because the, you know uh, anybody can take money and, and possessions away from you. They can never take your education away from you. I agree with that completely, and it sort of fits in line with what we're both saying. Learn what you're going to do. Learn about this space you're the one responsible for your decisions you're the one responsible for your money and you're the one responsible for what you do in your day-to-day life now to wrap this up jeff one question i got that i ask absolutely every single guest that i've got on here is what would it be if, if there's one lesson two lesson three points whatever maybe what would you say to somebody who is trying to get their self educated to understand what is going on from your point of view what would you say to somebody entering into this market from what you've learned so far I would say that anytime somebody is trying to tell you about an opportunity, they're just trying to take your money. And that's the shills, it's the social media. Uh, I tell everybody to watch the price action, to watch the social media, but do not invest based on it. Anytime somebody's selling, they're just trying to get your money. And if you fall into it, they're going to take your money and it's going to be gone. That's about as good as advice as I think anybody's ever given. It's short, it's succinct, it's perfect, and I agree with it entirely. Um, Jeff, look, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. One last thing, where can everybody find more about you? The best place is probably on LinkedIn. I'm always there. I'm always happy to connect to people. I'm on Twitter at Jeff Coin, LinkedIn, Jeff Coin. Track me down there, and I'm I, I read every email that shows up. So I'm always happy to talk to people and talk shop. Excellent. Well, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope I uh, sit down with you over the next couple of weeks in consensus. It'll be an absolute pleasure to uh, sit down and rack your brain a bit more and see what we can come up with. Um, real honor having you on the show, mate. I really love the uh, the style of, the, of, of your journalism. I, I enjoy reading it. It's not just an educational piece, but it's also very easy to read. So, guys, if you haven't looked across Jeff Coyne's work, that's J-E-F-F-K-O-Y-E-N. Guys, go check him out. He knows what he's talking about. And a great guest on the show. Thanks very much for having us, Jeff, or for, for being on the show. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks very much. And I'll see you in Brooklyn. Good man. The Trader Cobb Crypto Podcast. Check out TraderCobb.com because experience matters. 